in public that Jandel is precious to you only in such a way that you can gain your wife's love and deep respect but more important you can win Jehovah's approval a wife will find it much easier and respect the headship of a modest and humble husband than that of a proud and a stubborn one. You see, so in that way, you can win a gentle's love and respect. You, Jason, do not violently get angry with gentle in word or action, not to downgrow it here. In public and in private, Brother Jason, show respect to gentle. You should be compassionate to her. Show that she is precious to you. When Jason, you deal that with Jandel tenderly, considerately, attentively, and selfishly, it is easier for Jandel to submit uh, to your headship. And such a loving headship by Jason wins Jandel's love, respect, and eventually brings blessings on your marriage. So we, we see there how Jesus uh, show and how you can copy him as well. Okay, so now let's proceed on the part of Jandel. How can a wife or Jandel can be dearly loved as a wife? Well, the Bible shows that wife's role in marriage is honorable, dignified, okay? And the scripture tells husbands that they should assign the woman or the wife or Jandel honor. The Greek word uh, rendered honor means a price value or respect. In this form of words, the translated uh, uh, words are gifts and precious. So Jason, Jandil is a precious gift to you that you have to value and honor her. In the scripture, as a compliment, Jandil, as a wife, he is not a slave or an inferior as a person. The Bible Truly, that uh, they call uh, wives or women as a helper or a complement. But it does not indicate that woman's rule in God's arrangement was demeaning. On the contrary, the Bible writers apply the same word of a wife being a helper and to Jehovah being a helper. Yeah? Remember that Jehovah always being said as a, our helper. In the same way that Jehovah is a helper, the same word Jandil is a helper or a woman or a woman, it shows a dignified rule as well. Being a helper, Jandil is not just an assistance in his daily work or in the procreation of children, but the mutual support, the companionship it provides. Woman, Jandil, had her own unique mental, emotional, and physical makeup. She was a suitable, satisfying complement for you. Jandel, your recognition of the headship principle in the scripture, when it is followed by you, it will promote marital success and happiness. I would like you to read it for yourself as well in the scripture. Please open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. Ephesians 5, 21, 22 to 24. Can you read that please? Be in subjection to one another in fear of Christ. Let wives be in subjection to their husbands as to the Lord, because a husband is the head of his wife, just as the Christ is the head of the congregation, he being a savior of his body. In, in fact, as the congregation is the subjection to the Christ, wives should also be to their husbands in everything. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. It's mentioned there that you have to have deep respect and in subjection to Jason in everything. Yes, Jandel, relative subjection is a divine commandment and it is for your good. Without headship or leadership, the result is discord, confusion, and unhappiness. That's why you are being told in that scripture to have deep respect for Jason. It, was, it, it will be shown by your cooperation with him, not a competition. Cooperation instead of a competition. In fact, try to look at again on verse uh, 20 or 33 on that same scripture there. Can you read that verse uh, 33, uh, John Del, please? Nevertheless, 
each one of you must love his wife as he does himself. On the other hand, the wife should have deep respect for her husband. Yes, it was repeated in that verse that wife, what, should have deep respect for her husband. Not only just respect, but a deep respect to your husband or to Jason. Truly in wisdom, the creator of Jehovah has intended that you, Jandel, should be in subjection to Jason. In fact, only by your being submissive can Jason love you as well as his own body. For his own flesh is submissive to him. A sister named uh, Mendy uh, comments, the rule that Jehovah has assigned and to his female servant is an assurance of his love for us. I feel that giving my husband honor and respect is my way of showing appreciation to Jehovah for his arrangement. So being a respectful wife showed that you respect Jehovah's arrangement as well. And what a fine example for a gender to follow as well. Remember that a truly wise woman will build up her house. So in just one ears, you will not belittle him, but by understanding, try to make an adjustment. Remember, a foolish wife will tear his house by his own hands, but you will not do that. You will build your house. And one way to build your house, gentle, is to be supportive to your husband's headship, praising his accomplishment while taking his mistakes in stride. Christian wife is considered also as a helper, according to the Bible, to work with your husband. And it can contribute to much more pleasant home and a happy marriage. Look, gentle, for your husband, Jason, for decisions and work to make them succeed. Now, pointing to the importance of a supportive woman, uh, Solomon says, a capable wife is a crown uh, to her owner. Uh, we, we, we remember that a uh, famous uh, uh, quote people said that uh, behind every successful man, there is a good woman. And it is true. Solomon makes mention of a capable wife. Gentle, if you're a capable wife, the Bible says that, uh, it, we try to look at that word capable, it sums up many elements of goodness. The virtues of a good wife, as described in detail in chapter 31 in Proverbs, it tells us of a wife that includes uh, that, he are, that she is industrious, faithful, and full of wisdom. Her beauty, your beauty, is not just skin deep. It is the beauty of a God-fearing woman with godly personalities. A woman having this attribute is a crown for her husband. If you possess such qualities, your conduct brings honor to Jason, and it, is raised, and it raises him in the estimation of others. Can you remember, or can you imagine, Jen, uh, Jason's friends will say, what a fine wife you have. You see, so following that will raise Jason's estimation, and it will bring him also honor. Doing so, you will be dearly loved by Jason as well, in such a way that your marriage will deepen. So, we now see a bit of how Jason and Jandel conduct themselves according to the Bible. So, uh, how can you make your marriage last? How can you cultivate deep love in marriage? Well, let's consider that. Jason and Jandel, uh, the scripture tells us to clothe yourselves with love. Why? Because this love, agape, is the greatest of all love. It is governed by principles, right principles according to God's word. It is an unselfish concern of doing what is right for both of you. Such love enables you, Jason and Jandel, to follow the Bible's counsel. What counsel? Colossians 3.13, continue putting up one another and forgiving one another freely. You see? the way Jehovah forgives both of you as well. So loving married couples have to cultivate intense love or agape because what? Love covers the multitude of sins. Notice in that scripture that love covers mistakes. It does not eliminate them. 
since no imperfect human can be free from error. So what can we learn from that scripture there in Colossians 3.13?